thanks everyone that chose to come into this session rather than the other ones. Um, <laughs> voting with your feet, hopefully you choose me. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so thanks um, to Graham and, and Maura for their presentation. That's really interesting and uh, obviously we were, before I start, we obviously like to try and in incorporate that Ceres um, imagery into other, other products as well. So we're open to collaborations and working together with people. So if we just go forward a little bit. So Ceres Imagery, um, why would you choose Ceres rather than some other company that, um, that might do imaging for your farm? We're, we've, we, we started in 2013, we're a startup, we, um, we do like imaging of mostly of horticultural crops, but we also do row crops, um, unirrigated crops. In, in, we, we have been experimenting in Australia in that, but more so in other, in, in America. So, so we, we started in 2000, so we were founded in 2013, uh, and probably the first bit of imaging we did in Australia was 2015. So, so Australia is um, pretty, not exactly, the, uh, it's a smaller market than America, but it's a really important part of the Sarah story because we've, we've been imaging for a long time in Australia and we, we deliver some really good value to, to, our, to our customers here. So, um, so yeah, so first off, we were, um, our, our founder was a, a, P, a, a student and he was in Brazil and he was doing a lot of rainforest imaging um, for for his for his PhD, and he was like, well, I wonder if we could apply these imaging techniques we're using here in in crops, because at that point people weren't they were using satellites, was, wasn't that great a quality. Obviously, that was a long time before um, for Sentinel. So his thing was, well, maybe this this imagery is really useful when we're trying to work out how how to get through a drought. So that was that was where we started. Um, we partnered up with um, with some guys in UC Davis um, in in America, and and we came up with some. With some products from from the from our imagery. So so our our um, recently we were uh, featured in the New York Times um, talking about how we we help different crop growers. So so I guess a goal of ours will be to feature in the Adelaide Advertiser sometime in the next <laughs> twelve months. Um, yeah. So we we image about probably maybe five crops in Australia. So there's lots of potential for for working in other other areas. So our, our approach to, to imagery, uh, and we're open to using other imagery as well in our platform, but at this point we do, um, we have a, a, a camera we build ourselves that goes on the, on the wing of a plane and we, we, we do our, we fly over the, the, the client's paddock and, and then create imagery like that. So, so we feel this is really good because it allows us to create really high quality image so we can, we can vary the height depending on what, what crop we're using and we can deliver like a range of different products so I guess if you wanted to sum it up, the Ceres difference to, to, other, to other providers, we, we, we put a lot of emphasis on trying to collect really great data with, with our own sensors. We've got um, a thermal camera um, and all our, the bands are separated out, so the red, green and the infrared and that are separated into different bands, so then we then combine that up into a product that's specific for, um, for, for a crop. So uh, we pride ourselves in not necessarily doing, just doing imagery. We, we, our, our approach is we really want to try and find a value proposition for a, a particular crop. So um, we've got a couple there I'll go through with you afterwards. So um, yeah, our emphasis is on really getting great data to start off and we can, and, and use, controlling the whole process by using planes, by, by creating your own camera and that allows us to be really um, to be able to develop, to be able to deliver really good stuff. So I want to just go through and um, show you a couple of uh, products we create. So, so under irrigation management, um, we that's one of our one of our key um, products. So this is what we call this this image here is what we call our water stress image. Um, this is a this is a this is a pivot that you can see there. So the the blue areas are um, low low water stress, so in other words the crop's um, handling it all right and the red areas where it's struggling a bit more. And interestingly you can see there the um, just where the, the, the pivot's actually in progress as we fly over. So, so that timing of flights is something we can really hit with, well depending on the cloud and that, we can, we can usually be a little bit better than a, than a satellite. So. so yeah, so, so one of our little um, value propositions we could say is for over 20% of the pivots we fly, um, we find something that that can be actioned or where, where you're not maximising the value. And I'm sure that other imaging products 
uh, identifying um, issues as well. Um, so it just depends on the management on, on how much value you can find. But generally, in, in any big farm that we, we image like, there's always something that you can see there. And then once you know about the problem, the farmer's got to go and either go and have a look and work out whether there's something they can change to, to improve it or whether they just whether there's whether it's a soil type related issue, but usually there's something they can change. So um, when you've got a big property, it's really hard to get over everything. Um, you like, and you've usually got people working for you, so it, the imagery gives you another layer of checking. So we find that customers get a lot of value out of just being able to get that status update, like in in season with the imagery. So I just wanted to go just on on the pivot uh, water stress. Um, something we've, we've been experimenting with in America is trying to make sure that the wetting front of the, of the, of the pivot is actually hitting the, that the potatoes are not getting too wet basically. So with our thermal imagery, so this, this one in the, 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 gray, the purple one there is, is, a, is a, what we call our raw thermal imagery. So this is an output we do for potatoes. Um, so that's basically the thermal camera, um, not really processed much um, as it comes off the plane. And that provides a lot of value in terms of like where you can see where the slightly darker areas are, it's wetter. And I haven't actually got one for an orchard, but um, leaks show up really quickly in that, in, with, that, with that layer. So it's a good way to get over an area really quickly and find leaks. Uh, so thermal is something we really do really well from the plane. It's a little bit harder to get from satellite because you're further away and you've got more atmospheric um, variation. So, so we see that as one of our really great value adds compared to other imagery, but and also obviously um, there's a lot of syn synergy in working with other other imagery as well that maybe is high, higher um, temporal resolution in terms of like you might be flying more often, but you might have series as well to, to let you see that high resolution picture. So this pivot here, you can see there that um, if you look down there, that the area that hasn't been watered, the longest has been watered, you can see that's starting to get a little bit dry. The area that's and it's the that's a really good um, spread of, of irrigation. So with with our flights, with um, potato growers in the US have found that um, they can actually keep track of like where their water logging is. So water logging can be a is an issue that um, takes a lot of value out of potatoes because you get it really takes away from your quality if you, if they're sitting around in water log for too long. So getting that interval, that irrigation interval, um, they've found that the Ceres. Um, Water stress pr um, product is really good for for not allowing the pivot to stay wet for too long. <coughs> I think I've got so the other um, so this is a this is a, another product we do for um, uh, irrigation crops. So you can see at the top we've got a like what we call our water stress, and I'll, I'll have a high resolution photo of it later. So you can see there there's slight variation through the through the through the paddock based on um, this is this is really uh, measuring thermal canopy temperature. So with with our thermal canopy, we can see pick up slight variations in in in, um, in heat, which will which will tell you like if the canopy is slightly warmer. So as as irrigation is applied, um, if 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 something's happening with the valve and it's not quite right, then you'll it'll, it'll start to the transpiration will start to slow down in the plants. So you can if you can see that that's following an irrigation um, valve, then you'll be able to pick up areas that are that are not being irrigated properly. So before the before the plants start to droop with it, with our water stress, um, people can see that there's something something not quite right. That, and the bottom one down here is the canopy via. So that's basically um, that's an end of your eye shot there. So you can see that the, there's slight variations through that. Um, actually, just try that. Yes, you can see there that's possibly a soil type <laughs> difference there, but. Um, Obviously, there may be some actionable change you can make to that area there where it's, and you can see there's slightly higher, bigger through that area there. So if, if you're getting um, poorer quality crops through there, I'll show you an example later, then obviously then you could make changes based on that. Um, so, so in the, in the blow-up, you can see there this, this, uh, this row here with the water stress is being picked up as slightly lower vigor. Uh, I'm lower, slightly more stressed in the water stress, and you can see there that it's about the same size in the, in the, um, in the NDVI, so therefore the growth is about volume-wise the same, but is there something going on with this row? So it gives people a quick check of, their, of the irrigation, and if there's a blocked um, 
pipe or whatever, then that, that, there might be something happening there which is stopping the water flowing up, flowing up there. So we'll pick up with that with our irrigation quicker than, than um, what you will with by, by noticing in the field. So here's another value proposition um, from, from, from the water stress imaging. Uh, so interesting, just as that question on um, where we could put, where, how, how imagery works in with the Internet of Things devices. Um, they're actually technologies that work really well together. So for instance here, take this image, if you had your a sensor there, or if you had your sensor here, you're going to get a quite different reading, like in terms of um, soil moisture or a, if you had like a sap flow meter or whatever. So obviously having an image as well to be able to give you that data on where that sensor fits into the whole property um, is, is really a value add. So, so coming back to this example, um, so you can see there this, this area here is getting a little bit wetter than the rest of it. So it's probably a soil type difference. Um, so this, this is an example definitely that we, we see all the time in Australia. Um, and some of our growers have managed this by, by reducing the irrigation here. So maybe snapping off, like t changing the pipe over or, or clip, clipping off every second emitter. Um, so then you get a more even output of yield. So then the crop will become more even and you know, you better harvest at the same time. And, and yeah, in this case here, 25 to 30% improvement in grape quality. Uh, and that's pretty common to see that sort of improvement. So. This one here is another American example. Um, so you can see that this is our water stress product. So this is there's four um, different. Once again, we've taken the thermal and we've reduced it into the, the four categories. So it's easy to see where the, where the variation is. Um, so in this area here, it's pretty clear that something was going wrong because that that, that the top area there's a little bit more water. Probably there maybe the but, but this whole area is slightly less than what it should be compared to these other areas in terms of water stress. And so making small changes to the irrigation, they, they could even that up and, and it was, and, at a, and especially at a crucial time of year, if, if the water stress, if the irrigation's slightly off, then you can bump it up and, um, and it really does make a difference to the nut, to, to yields. So. So those are um, horticultural crops, um, tree nut crops. So coming across to, to other examples, this one here is um, a tomato crop. And so imagery probably provides a real quick value add, especially when there's pat with pivots and things like pivots and tomatoes, like the paddocks are changing all the time. So you can you can pick up differences in the in the you can pick up different paddocks really easily without having to change equipment over. So you can see here that 40 I'll go back, sorry. So our water stress picked up that there was a big difference between the water that was actually, even though the farmer thought he was applying the same amount to every to the whole crop, when he looked in the in the um, in the water stress, you can see that it's getting a lot less this end. So, small changes to the valve meant that even though it's still a little bit uneven, it's a lot better. So that's now whether whether that was a soil type, and so he changed it around a little bit and added more into this higher block um, and evened it up. But that's a quick yield improvement that can be made with using. The, the thermal imagery. Um, so this is the potato pivots. Um, so this is another example of, uh, of a value add. So you can see there that these, these couple nozzles are probably maybe not working properly, so that shows up really strongly in the thermal imagery, that straight after the irrigation, they're just not looking as, as wet as the rest of it. So you can see there as well, this is the wetting front. So tracking that wetting front and seeing that actually just in front of it is, is actually dried out enough. So we're not, we're not putting water on top of already um, waterlogged areas um, is a really, potato growers have found that to be a really big value add for, for our imagery. So most of the, the examples I've given you so far have been like the from the thermal, so the water stress imagery. Um, so this is this is what we call our chlorophyll index. So it's similar to NDVI, but we've got a different logarithm we use to work it out. Um, and we find that, although that's just a red and green image, so it looks the same, we found that it picks up um, slightly more growth. So at the higher end, so we're in areas like this where it's actually really growing really well, you'll see more variation using the chlorophyll imagery compared to NDVI. So this, 
this patch here, this is at NDVL versus chlorophyll, the same um, flight and the same time. So you can see with NDVI, it's uniformly fairly green. Um, so that's obviously growing really well. But when we look at our chlorophyll, we're seeing more variation and you can see that the height, the top end of the pivot is better. So when you when you come to optimising your yields and once you've dropped out the, the obvious problems, you can pick up with irrigation and having really good data quality so that you can actually see change and it be repeatable um, is really important. So yeah, so the, the nitrogen, we, we find it's really useful for tracking that in-season growth and in the case of pivots, there's probably the option of adding in um, extra, extra fertiliser depending on where, where the crop's up to. So in this case here, obviously they've picked up a change and then applied extra to here based on what the imagery showed. So obviously the, um, having that high resolution data allows you to, to get more um, insights and allows you to be able to sort of target your application, I guess. So another tool we've, we've got with, with our platform, but obviously we we could, our imagery could also be used in other platforms to do this. Um, we, we create what's called bare soil. There's two things here, zone creation. So um, we, we, create, we, we do something called bare soil imaging. So when, when a pivot's um, empty before they start, before we start planting it, um, we find that doing, we can actually pick up the, the zone differences quite um, from soil type. So you can create a zone from, from the, um, from from what the imagery looks like from 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 the from that from the bare soil image. So that's a really great way of seeing soil type variations. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Um, and obviously later on in the year, quite often the the growth patterns will be really strongly um, correlated to what the bare soil was. So being able to see it before you plant it, um, especially if it's not a pivot use all the time, can really add value. Um, so we can do the VRA maps, like the variable rate map in our app. app. So, so the way that the imagery gets delivered is people, at the moment, they, they, they contract with us and then we deliver it straight to a web app, but we're also open to talking and importing our imagery into other, other platforms. Yeah, so this is, this is what we call, this is, a, this is a product we call Colour Infrared. So as I was talking about, the bare soil imagery. Um, this, and we can create soil maps from that that will give you an application um, rate map before you start the, the pivot. Something we've been working on the last couple of years is in, um, most of the time with our, with our imagery, people will, will, will create the image. Someone like myself will go out and talk to the grower and they'll identify areas where we can make changes or where we can where we can, where they can change their management basically to, to, to make use of the, the information the imagery encapsulates. Uh, we've also uh, been adding in, um, in some crops, the ability to, we automatically detect, like based on what we know about pests and, and the crops, where there might be potential issues. So this is what we call our um, anomaly detection. So we, we do the image and then we, we run it through our program and identify areas that compared to this image and the last image, there's a change that's worth following up. So, so in this case here, we've identified three little plots that looking at the image, we think considering what we know about aphids and what we know about this crop, there's a possibility there's, there's aphids at that spot. And quite often people will go and look at it and we're always improving that and trying to validate that better. So that's, that's our automatic anomaly detection. Um, so these, these three images as well, there's, we've tried to, we, we're picking up different things based on, yeah, so this, we can, apart from just a, a point anomaly, we also identify areas that I've got, we think there's a problem in the whole block. So in this case here, vermicillium wilt, we think is perhaps causing this pattern. And in this case here, we think perhaps rot is a problem up here and there. So, so that's, that all comes like it's delivered as the imagery is delivered basically, so. So in terms of later in the year after a season's finished, um, we use our imagery in various ways to try and help people make bigger scale management decisions. Uh, in this case here, um, this is something we've been doing for quite a few years is tree counting. So basically we, we have a, a logarithm that runs through the image and identifies 
each tree centre, so each of those little dots is a tree centre. And from that, when, when you've got an older orchard in almonds or citrus or whatever, then quite often there's missing trees for various reasons. So this, this area is... So those areas are obviously um, trees. So you, then you can count that as a tree and um, use, use that in your planning to work out how many replants you need to get. I mean, okay, yep, tree counts. So here's a, here's a couple of examples of tree counts. So you can see that depending on the actual types of tree, we can get pretty good error rates. Um, so just rushing to this, but this is, this is, this is another error. Um, in terms of delivering this at a bigger scale, um, this, is, this, is, this is our anomaly detection, which we call field rank. So we can put each field against a, like a, this is where we think they're at. So green, a red is obviously not so good, green better. Orange is check something out. So when you've got a great big, when you've got a big pivot farm, having this information saying, oh, I would think these pivots are where they rank, this is where the pivots rank, can be really useful. And cumulative stress, we, we create this stress, um, water stress image, and then we, we, can, we combine it up to give you a feel for where, the, where, the, where your strong areas in the crop are, and that will often match really well with yield. So that's, thanks for that. Thank you very much, Scott. No worries.